This is ME370 at Portland State University. Lecture 4, Introduction to Intellectual Property. This is part 4 of the lecture on intellectual property. It deals with copyright. Copyright is a distinct form of intellectual property, different from patents, different from trademarks, and different from trade secrets. Copyright is ownership of the expression of an idea. You can't copyright an idea or even the factual information that is used in the expression that is then copyrighted. It gives you a absolute or a positive right. That is, copyright gives you the right to reproduce, distribute, and sell, display, and perform. Here's a, a quick uh, reminder. A utility patent gives you the right to prevent someone else from using your invention, and it expires in 20 years. A copyright gives you the right to perform or sell. In other words, it allows you, whereas patents prevent somebody else. The lifetime of a copyright is currently 70 years after the death of the author or 120 years after the creation of the work, and it can be extended. It, patents expire in 20 years, period. Now, people effectively extend patents by improving the idea, sometimes in a trivial way, but there isn't an inherent uh, long protection, whereas copyright is 70 years. And it's, this is a very controversial issue, actually, associated with copyrights. Furthermore, copyrights don't prevent somebody else from creating a different expression of the same idea. When something is copyrighted, you have to establish that it's actually you that created the work. So when you write something, for example, it's automatically copyrighted. Now you can declare your copyright by using the little copyright sign and that basically is a signal to somebody else that you uh, intend to claim your, this right and prevent them from photocopying, redistributing it unaltered. If you wish, you can go a step further and register your work with the Library of Congress. You pay a, 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 a modest filing fee and then you essentially established the uh, copyright date and the work itself, and that gives you a bit more leverage if you're worried about someone else violating your copyright. But it's not necessary, it's just sort of practically helpful. So here's an example. I used this slide when we were talking about uh, the concept of patents, and I explained that the patent process uh, helped to um, protect the investment of effort necessary to create an invention. Well, that diagram was mine, so it's copyright me. So I created it in a few years ago, and this is an example of how it's not the idea of this feedback process, but rather it's the expression, the way that I displayed that idea in the form of this graphic. Here's another example. I downloaded this uh, pic a picture of Einstein from the Library of Congress. The uh, picture itself is in the public domain. There's no violation of copyright. When I downloaded that picture, I opened it in Photoshop. I applied something called a cutout filter. I saved the document, then I opened it in Adobe Illustrator, and I used this chalk brush font to write E equals MC squared, sort of on his uh, lapel and shoulder. And then I saved the result as a JPEG. I could then, I essentially have copyright over this particular image, and I could make posters from this and sell it. Okay, I'm, I haven't done that, I'm not interested in doing that, but the idea here is that it's not Einstein's picture, it's not the software that I used to create it, it's not even the formula, the mathematical formula e equals mc squared, they, those things don't make it copyright, rather it's the combination of all of those things into a expression of an idea that e equals mc squared is somehow associated with Einstein and this uh, sort of dramatic grayscale rendering makes him seem, I don't know, weighty or whatever. So this is an expression of an idea or a set of ideas and it can be copyrighted by me. This table summarizes the difference between patents and copyrights, so we'll work from top to bottom. The duration. Patents expire in 20 years the date of filing, that, that is when you submit the for a full patent application, not after the patent is awarded, but the date at which it was filed. Copyrights currently are life of the author plus 70 years or 120 years from creation. 
and they may be renewed. This is very controversial. Uh, basically, uh, whenever Mickey Mouse, whenever the earliest video of Mickey Mouse is threatened, uh, it, it approaches the end of its copyright, um, Disney and other big money studios buy the extension in Congress. They basically have uh, written the laws every time, rewritten the copyright laws and made it longer and longer and longer. So the, co the term of copyright keeps getting extended when these very large corporations decide that they want to protect their artistic expressions. There's a whole interesting side story to this. Uh, there is a, in fact, the nickname for the law that was passed uh, was called the Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse Protection Act. The scope of patents and copyrights are different as well. A patent is limited to the implementation of an idea. So uh, automatic braking systems. You can't patent all of automatic braking systems, but you can patent a certain mechanism that contributes to that. In fact, you'd probably have multiple patents on your automatic braking system. Copyrights refer or protect the expression of the idea, not the idea itself. So it's, it's a very different kind of scope. Uh, registration for patents, uh, patents in general are fairly expensive. You can file for $400, but the legal fees necessary to do the patent research ahead of time to make sure your patent will then be approved, but also to prepare the patent application in the format expected by the Patent and Trademark Office, including those sort of stylized drawings and the, the, the text, um, requires a lot more. Say, you know, $10,000 is low, $20,000 is a little high, but uh, it could vary with the complexity of the thing you're patenting. Uh, copyrights, on the other hand, is, are essentially automatic. As soon as you've created something, it's copyright you. You can add the little copyright sign for nothing, or you can register it with the Library of Congress for about $100. The notion of independent inventions is also different. So for a patent, there's no exemption for the fact that you may have created or come up with the invention independently. So let's say um, you have a patent on a mousetrap, a certain design and the, the mechanism in the mousetrap. I could, in, I could completely, without knowing about your um, mousetrap invention, without having any idea, never seen your mousetrap, I don't even know who you are, didn't even know there's a patent on it, I could have created a mechanism that is substantially the same. Now, if you already have a patent on that mechanism, the fact that I in created it independently doesn't help. Doesn't, I, I, it's not an excuse. Too bad. You've got the patent. You can stop me from producing my mousetrap. On the other hand, copyrights, I can't create the same expression as you, but I can take the same idea. So you could take a photograph of Einstein and you could uh, use Photoshop and create a sort of atmospheric sense. And you could even probably you know, figure out a way to add E equals MC squared onto that photograph. And that, if it was if it didn't look like my version, then you could get a copyright on that. There's a couple uh, extra terms and concepts associated with copyright. Very important one is fair use. Copyright gives the owner the exclusive right to reproduce their work. However, there is a limitation on that exclusion and it's called fair use. There's a list of activities that fall under the rubric of fair use. Criticism and comment. For example, if I go to a movie and I want to write a review, or maybe I want to do some analysis on the psychodramatic elements in that for um, a publication, well, I could, I could take some of the dialogue from that movie. I could even take a short clip from that movie and include it in my criticism or commentary, and that would be considered fair use. The key idea is I take just a part. The other key idea is that I'm making a substantial additional intellectual or creative effort by analyzing the work. I'm not just merely redistributing it. Uh, similarly for news reporting, a news reporter can stand in front of a copyrighted poster or a, a news reporter could include an image that is copyrighted or even a part of the text that's copyrighted and then with the intention of relaying that information to the public and not be in any danger of copyright violation because they're using it under the terms of fair use. Likewise, teaching, scholarship, and research allow for um, excerpts. And so when you write a paper, 
you can uh, include a short section from a book or a publication, or you could even include some sort of imagery. The idea is you're not then repackaging this for sale or you're not repackaging it in toto. Rather, you're saying, I'm gonna take a part of this idea, which is copyrighted, and uh, use it as part of my uh, substantial additional intellectual or creative effort. However, fair use isn't an automatic escape hatch. You can't say, oh, I'm copying this just because I want to learn about it. So there are boundaries on fair use, and they're established by case law. Basically, people go to court, and they argue about it, and they set precedents, and those precedents sort of establish the boundaries. Different from fair use, but also related to copyright, is this important idea of the public domain. A work that is in the public domain is basically something that's not copyrighted. This typically refers to uh, older creative works. For example, the... Star Spangled Banner is a poem by Francis Scott Key, was created a long time ago. It's in the public domain. We can use that work, we can use that poem, that is the words, and uh, sing it and put it in uh, booklets, etc., without worrying about it. Likewise, all of Shakespeare is in the public domain. That doesn't mean I can go to the library and take a book of Shakespeare's sonnets, photocopy that book, and then sell the photocopy. Okay, because what I'm doing there is I'm violating the creative expression in the form of the book, meaning the layout of the sonnet on the page, the font size, the particular any sort of ornamentation on the page. What I can do is I can take the words in the sonnet, put them into a word processor or sort of graphic layout program, create my own artistic display, my own creative display of those words, and then produce that and sell it. You should know that the, the song Happy Birthday is copyrighted. So people everywhere are violating copyright when they sing Happy Birthday. Yet another concept related to copyright is Creative Commons. Creative Commons is the work largely of Lawrence Lessig. He's a law professor, he used to be at Stanford, uh, is now at Harvard. He helped, and a lot of people around the globe are part of the creativecommons.org effort that creates an alternative to copyright. The idea is to create a new balance between ownership, you know, the fact that I am the author, the creator of this work, and the allowing other people to reuse the work. It's very good effort, uh, somewhat controversial in that it's an open challenge to copyright a work, and in particular, Lessig argued the Supreme Court case against the Mickey Mouse Copyright Extension Act and lost. So as a user of Creative Commons, so I can do creative work and use the Creative Commons license as an alternative to copyright. There are six types of those licenses. I'll show you four here just to give a sense. Along the left column are the names and the sort of graphical symbol that you attach to a document that is uh, uses a Creative Commons license. Attribution is the most liberal, that is to say, it maximizes the opportunity for other people to use your work. Basically, if I use the attribution license, I claim that I am the author. I'm the person who created this work, but I'm going to allow you to do anything you want to with it. You can remix it, meaning you can chop it up. You can, uh, if it's a song, you can take parts of it and use it without worry, but I'm the originator. Attribution, no derivatives. The next one down, I claim authorship. I allow you to redistribute it as a solid single work, but you can't remix it. In other words, you can't take parts of this, chop it up, and put it into some other creative work. The attribution share alike, uh, different from either the first two. I claim authorship. I allow other people to remix and reuse. So you can take you, know, you can take part of my words, you can uh, take part of my image, you can take part of my song, and you can. Re reconstitute it into some other creative work, and you can even sell it. You can sell the remixed work, but if you use my work that has this Creative Commons license, your work inherits my license. In other words, you also have to allow other people to remix, you also have to allow commercial use, and then like a virus, anyone who reuses that is also required to inherit that license. Finally, uh, attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license uh, is most restrictive. I claim authorship. People can use it and share it as long as they give me credit. In other words, you don't have to uh, pay me a license to, to make copies, but you can't remix it and you can't sell it. So you can use it and redistribute it, but you can't make money from it. 
So these are it's a very important alternative to copyright. There are software licenses that have similar functions.